explosion if necessary. There's a simple uh, task to make sure that our timer is correct, which then relate to the rectifier. Uh, so the straight talk test is a very simple method to which you can check if the machine is having accurate timer or rectifier. The spinning top test works best with what we call a single phase X ray generator. And depending what type of generator, uh, into a single phase, it is a half wave single phase uh, <coughs> generator. The check on timer, you uh, make the exposure, whatever time it is, times 60. Full wave single, uh, single phase generator, exposure timer, times 120. And then we have what's called three-phase uh, generator. With the three-phase, you generally can't make a simple test with the spinning top test. The spinning top test work on, uh, the way how it works is that there's a disc. The disc has a little pinhole at the edge. So um, when you do your test, uh, like a quality test, you put the disc on top of the X-ray film. You spin the disc. Uh, and then you put it underneath the, um, the extra, extra tube. You spin the disc, you set the time, you make the exposure. Once you make the exposure and you develop the film, you get a certain amount of dots based on your time. Uh, so you see like one, two, three, four. Depending what your exposure time is, you should have a certain amount of dots. If there's too much dots or too few dots, then your timer is off. So that's how you know the timing system is not the same. So that's a very simple way of testing if your if the external machine has if the time is need any collaboration uh, collaboration. Uh, with the three phase, you generally can do a spinning top spec, a spinning top test. Because once you make the exposure, it will give you like an arch shape, which then like how you know what is the timing is. With the th uh, three phase, there's a more complicated way of testing it. So, but if you don't do that, that's more of the quality uh, assurance people that does it. Um, when you get to lab, if you, uh, once you get a the program, depending on semester, we do do a specific test, and Ms. Smith can show you how it works. So let's do an, exa uh, an example on how, how many dots we should get based on these questions. How many dashes or dots? If the exposure time is at one tenth of a second with a full wave single phase generator. <coughs> full wave single generator, so I have to put out exposure time is one tenth. Times 120. 120 divided by 10 will give you. dots. When you make the exposure, based on that time selection, the film should have the film with the spin top test, the disc should you should see 12 dots. If there's more or less, then your timer is out of sync. Uh, then that's when you call the maintenance guy to uh, fix the time system. So that's a simple method of testing it with the same phase check. Can you give another example? <coughs> Different times or something? Oh, sure. Um, a different way of asking? A different way of asking. Mm -hmm. Can we just read one tenth of whatever else? Oh, it would be. Uh, you have to say a half, half wave, and it would be one times the 60. Yeah. So divided yeah, by 60, yeah. right? So and basically, the, the question, like, this is full wave, so this is. Um, so I either be asking half wave or full wave, and I can ask this about, because it's can't work out. Because with a three phase, you can't really. Uh, the only thing you can get is come on, shit. So is that always going to be um, like times 120 or times Based 60? on the machine single phase generator full wave mm -hmm. method or single phase, yeah, so it'll be either 60 or 120. And I explain the reason why it's 60 or 120 in the couple slides. 
And half wave is always usually going to be half of whatever a full wave is, right? Yeah. Okay. And then three wave, you'll never ask them. Yeah, because you can't really tell. Because yeah. it's all you can get with knowledge. If it's a large, oh, it's a three phase. Okay. <laughs> so if it's a quarter wave, would you do just times 30 then? No, there's no such thing. Oh, it's, it's such either thing. a half wave or a full wave. Oh. Behind the uh, Where is the AMA meter located? A secondary side step up transformer, B secondary side upper circuit, uh, C between the high mode transformer and the X ray tube, or the above, none of the above. C. D. All the above. D. All the above. <coughs> Everything we just discussed will be on the quest. Everything we're going to discuss right now won't be on the quest. Yay. Okay, we've been talking about rectifications a lot. Um, X-ray tube, as I mentioned earlier, work more efficiently with direct, the direct current, DC current. However, the power supply that the X-ray imaging system receive is AC current, because the hospital get, uh, or whatever you work, I get the electricity from the power plants, and the power plants generate AC electricity. Uh, in order to convert DC, uh, from AC to DC, you need some sort of device known as a rectifier, which convert 
AC electricity into DC electricity. And this rectification process occur on the secondary circuit. Rectification can occur either full wave or half wave process. The simplest method, uh, simplest uh, rectification would be halfway. Halfway only uses the positive half cycle um, uh, during the uh, rectifying process. Remember how air, AC electricity uh, comes in, it alternates between back, uh, positive and negative. So it only uh, uses the positive cycle and suppresses or just ignore the negative cycle. Half wave rectification can also be for self rectification <coughs> because it uses the extra tube itself um, um, to recti uh, as a rectification process instead of having additional um, rectified components in the energy system. Um, this is kind of detrimental to the extra tube itself because it costs more heat than necessary. Um, a dis disadvantage of using half wave rectifications is that it wastes half the power because it's not using the negative side, uh, it's just using the positive side. Um, because it's alternating, the hertz occurring in how many seconds? 60, 60 hertz per second. And there's both positive and negative pulses, right? So 120 pulses. It all using the positive side, so um, with half wave rectification, it has 60 pulses per second. <coughs> That's the reason why when we do our so in top test, half wave for cell rectifications, we use uh, exposure time times 60. I'm going to try to post it in the full wave rectifications. Uh, full wave rectifications is uh, more efficient because the rectifier using the negative impulse as well by converting the negative impulse to a uh, positive pulse. achieved by using different valves, uh, known as the diodes, I think that's how you pronounce it, D-I-O-D-E-S. Diodes. Diodes, diodes, diodes. Piano, piano. <laughs> <laughs> tomato, tomato. <laughs> piano. <laughs> yeah, I played the piano. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just from the negative pulses to positive. Uh -huh. So I have on your That's the reason we do a single uh, single top test with full wave single phase rectifications. I mean full wave single phase generator you use a hundred twenty. So where it says making negative to, so it makes a negative impulses into positive. into positive. So it's all positive going through. Yes, yeah, so all positive. Um, there's two ways um, two of two of rectification constructions. The old methods of valve tubes, which is pretty much obsolete. Um, the valve tubes work 
similar to that of an incandescent light bulb again. <coughs> glass tube, and within the glass tube, there's a filament that glows and activates when the electricity goes through. Um, and it's quite large. Um, valve tubes tend to break um, more frequently because it has a filament, and so if they use a filament, it gets uh, smaller and more brittle, and then when the filament breaks, it's we have to, we have to replace the rectifiers. The most uh, type of common rectification rectifier is a solid state semiconductor method. It's much smaller compared to the valve tube. It lasts longer and more durable. Today's X-ray imaging system mainly uses solid-state rectifier process. And there's, since there's no filament to burn, it lasts much longer too. Are the solid state rectifier since it will be the silicon because this works as an efficient semiconductor, it regulates electricity going through. And the silicon can either mix in well, one of two different uh, alloys. Uh, if you want to make the silicon more negative, it's called an N type junction. It, uh, the negative silicon semiconductor rectifier is mixed with arsenic type of. And if it's mixed with gallium, <coughs> it has loose <coughs> um, electrons, so it's called positive p type junction. And um, extra energy system is n type and p type layer in the same way where n and p is next to each other, so that the negative will flow to positive. <coughs> For test purpose, you just need to know what the main components of the solid state made up, and if it's mixed with arsenic, what is it? It's mixed with gallium. What type is it? Uh, generate, high volt generator. Main purpose? Is convert the two infinite volts that we see of AC electricity up, uh, to kilovolt of DC electricity. The generator is a fixed component in the extra imaging systems. Whenever the uh, hospital purchase, you uh, have to um, work with it. <coughs> uh, you have no control over that. The only thing you have control will be the control console. That's how you make your selections. And there's different types of generators that the hospital can purchase. Uh, three basic types would be single phase generator, three phase generator, and high frequency generator. Single phase is the most cheapest way to purchase uh, extra energy system. Three phase is the most common. High frequency is used mainly in, uh, well, some modalities. Although it's, get, although it's going to, um, regular X-ray imaging system as well. Depending on what type of generators, it all will affect the quality and the quantity of the X-ray photons, X-ray photons produced. Single phase generator, this is similar for single phase, one like goes first to uh, use um, the distribution of the Incoming electricity, um, when part of the electricity is coming in. With the single phase halfway rectifications, it suppresses the negative and only uses the positive, term, uh, positive uh, pulse. Mm. 
So it's uh, it suppresses by a cluster of fashion over here. Um, so with some phase, the inefficiency is that it will stop producing X-ray 60 times in that one second. It's make, stop, make, stop, make, stop. Because it suppresses it down 60 times. <coughs> with, for replications, it converts a negative impulse to positive impulse. So the extra production is more efficient, it cuts exposure time in half because we're using uh, the negative, negative um, impulse as positive. But the problem with this is still dip down to zero every time. So it's still stop making x-ray six times. Yeah, but it's a lot quicker, time. right? Yeah, but it's much, 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 much more quicker. So it stops making the x-ray at zero? Yeah, it stops. It's just like if you stop making okay. it, you stop because it dipped down to this point. With three phase, Generator, phase. It's like having uh, three single phase coming of uh, 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 coming in. Uh, each of these come at a different time. There's about 120 degree difference. So there's three set of coils. Each coil is a single phase from, uh, that's connected into the transformer. One X-ray energy system can be either three-phase power with six pulses or three-phase power with 12 pulses. Every time one the phase starts to dip down, the next phase kicked in. Um, so it never dip down to zero. Did you say it doesn't dip down to zero? Well, so, uh, so we have three phases coming here. So we have one phase. So it starts going down. The other one will start kicking in. So as go down, this one kicks in. As it's go down, the next one something like goes in. So we never go down to zero. So the production is much more efficient. So by filling in the blanks, it just starts another production. What's that? By filling the in the by filling in the blanks, it just fills in another production of. The waves, right? Yeah, well, well I, yeah, something like the house in the base, I just go down, so the, the next one will go and just okay. prevent it from going down. So it's out sync by 120 degrees. Uh, basic uh, consideration of um, the base exposed. Usually the primary side of this transformer is in a delta shape format. And the secondary side is a Y shape format. Each of these lines represent a phase current. So here's a single phase, so we have three individual single phase coming in, out of sync at 120 feet, and then connect to three different lines. When we use the rectification process, each of these phase, we have two pulses, right? That's why I have two pulses here. <coughs> so three phase, six pulses. Three-phase exposed. Uh, three-phase trial pulse, usually on the primary side, it's a delta shape. Um, 
configuration, and the same as I will have two type of uh, transform um, configurations. It's either Y or Delta shift. It could be either Y and Y, or just how they want to do it. Um, we face 12 poles. Um, can take up more heat, so it usually used with the busy hospital, trauma hospital, or in orthopedic department that x-ray constantly all day. And it's had 12 poles because each of these lines, when you convert, you make the, uh, <coughs> you convert the negative to positive. Yeah, two poles here, two poles here, two poles here. So yeah, total of 12, two phase 12 poles. Uh, it could handle more heat. Yeah. Today's hospital is either three phase six poles or three phase twelve poles. The big machine that I was working with in the old room was it was yes, still is a single phase single phase. Generator. Positive, so it tends to be less for the dip. After the dip, it's called ripple effect. The less ripple effect, the more efficient the expert generator is. So, how low would it go when it has three phases in? Um, by the So, um, <laughs> okay. multi ripple effect. Three phase have 100% ripple effect. I mean, it goes all the way down to 100%. No production batteries. With a three phase six post, it has 13% ripple effect. And with a three phase 12 post, it will have 4% ripple effect. So with these two, we have an 87 to 96% efficiency. High frequency generator. This will provide nearly the constant uh, voltage, so it will never dip down to zero. It's going to have less than one percent of the ripple effect. High frequency generator is usually used with mammography, um, X-ray imaging unit, and it's always in the CT. As you know, the CT CT provide much greater detail than that of traditional X-ray uh, generators. And we want a mammography to provide the highest quality of image so the radiologist can look at the, the, at the radiograph to make sure there's no cancers or going in. And the cost is still going down, so now there's a lot of brand new hospital of an X-ray imaging system with a high frequency generator especially with the digital imaging. 
frequency work is that it converts a 60 hertz cycle that's coming in into 500 to uh, a couple thousand um, cycles. And with for rectifications, it convert that, all those cycles, into a positive, so it will almost be a straight line. Can you repeat that, uh, With high frequency, the way why it's so, um, it gives such much better images, it convert the 60 hertz of cycle coming in into from 500 to a couple thousands of cycles. Uh, with that and with patients, all the negative will go to positive, so it's made almost a straight line. There won't be any depth. So there's like a little, you can't really see it though, yeah. like that. it almost makes a straight line. Yeah. How in, in geometry you want to put these two together? It doesn't line, it become like a, a curve. How does this affect your technique so much? If you're working from a three-phase room to a single-phase room, and some hospitals have that for some reason, they have they have different uh, company in different rooms. Like one's a G room, one's a uh, uh, Philip room. Uh, one is a single-phase generator, and the other room is a three-phase generator. The hospital I was at, one room is three-phase, one room is single-phase. If you're going from three phase to a single phase room, you have to increase your technique. You have to double your technique. And what do you double? General, general the rule of thumb, KV stay consistent. You change the mass. Mass change. From three phase room to a single phase room, you normally double the mass. It said two thirds, but I don't have time to calculate what two thirds of seven is. <laughs> I just double it. <laughs> Otherwise, your image exposure will be uh, too light. Sufficient. From a from a single phase room to a three phase room, then what happens? You will reduce your mass. Otherwise, you'll be overexposed. From single phase room to three phase.